All right. Well, good morning, everybody. I hope everybody had a good uh, weekend. The weather is changing. This is the first full week of fall. Uh, so it's actually a good time for um, all our agents to reevaluate where they're at in their uh, business plan for 2023. See what you've done in the past uh, couple months, three months or quarter. Um, if you've uh, hit your targets, if you're hitting your target to end the um, fiscal year as planned, uh, if not, readjust your plan and try to, you know, finish out 2023 uh, strong. So uh, with that, we have a special uh, uh, affiliate spotlight this morning. Uh, I'm going to hand it over to Brandon with uh, First American NHD, and he's going to talk a little bit about the current events in our industry. Brandon, without further ado. Thanks, Ruben. Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone is having a fantastic start to their fall. And uh, like Ruben said, the, the weather is changing and getting a little cooler. Thank God. I know a lot of you, like me, have been waiting for that. <laughs> uh, those 95 degree days are never that fun. Um, so kind of talking about hot and the topic of, of fires. Um, so something, I don't know how many of you went to CAR this last week. Um, we actually had a booth there and we were promoting a product that only us and another company are um, selling right now for CAR. And we've heard some rumors that this is a product that they're gonna add to the RPA as an option. And it's called Fortress Fire. And I've talked a little bit about it. Um, we've been just selling it, I think about a month now. And what it is doing um, for a lot of people, as you guys know that the insurance companies have left California and are not insuring, um, especially fire insurance. And that's a big deal, especially for these homes that are up in the foothills in those high fire severity zones. But if you can't get fire insurance, you know, that is a high risk for you as a homeowner to purchase properties like that. And so this product um, has been developed by CAR and the Department of Insurance. And this, um, this company, Fortress Fire, typically what their typical um, product is that they sell is called is a fire retardant and products like that. And they worked with a company to develop this satellite imagery and scoring process that provides a risk score for a property. And what it also does is it looks at all of the different images or different things on a property that could cause a fire or could cause a higher risk to a fire. And so um, I'll put a, a link in the chat on where to go to check it out or just our website. And it has a lot of frequently asked questions, but this product is for really buyers who want to know more information and what they can, can do to mitigate the fire risk that they have on a property. So if it's trimming trees, they're in the report, it will provide that, you know, this tree needs to be trimmed. This bush looks like it needs to be trimmed up. It looks a little overgrown, things like that, that they're providing with this risk score. And again, this is something that is not required. And this is something that if you have um, a client that is really worried about it, again, this is just additional information where you can kind of use your knowledge and also kind of pull this out as an option for them to give you a, a leg up, right? To show more information, to provide more. I know a lot of you um, are trying to give a lot of your, your past clients or your current clients more information so that they can make a better decision on their home buying or selling. And so this again is a product that was developed by CAR in the Department of Insurance and they're working with us um, to provide this for your clients. Um, and it's just again, additional, additional information about fire zones, additional information on, on what you could do, what the, the homeowner could do to mitigate their fire risk. And what we've heard is the brokers who, who provide insurance are really the target of the people who are gonna be able to provide um, using this information um, insurance. 
versus the companies like um, what we've seen with State Farm, how they've left and they're not providing that information or they're not providing insurance. Um, this again is not gonna necessarily change them or like a lender who's asking, um, what can you provide us? What we've heard is it's really those brokers who are providing or selling the insurance that they're the ones who are gonna be able to use this information to be able to determine, you know, okay, this is what you've done on the property. This is where it was at before. And you've done a lot of things to mitigate your fire risk. Here's what our, um, you know, our rate's gonna be. And so again, this is something that is just like the FHDS will probably upgrade change. And as they start to figure out how to really provide this product, um, you'll probably hear more information from CAR and the Debar Department of Insurance coming forward with this. And what we've heard is by December, around December is when they're thinking of maybe adding this as an option on the RPA. And the other thing too, is what we've been told is that it has to be in a fire zone, a high fire zone. And when you order it on our website, if it's not in that zone, then it'll kick it back. But if you did have a, a client, and I know that there are instances, and we saw this with um, the fires that have happened in Northern California, and also the fires that happened in Maui, is that you may not be in a fire zone, but you could have your house burned down by a fire, right? And so this is, again, the zone could be across the street or up the hill. But if a homeowner or a buyer wanted to know this information and see, okay, what could we do to mitigate fire on, on the risk that we have? This again, for a uh, fortress fire is this product and the, the price that they had set. And this is again, not our price. This is something that the department of insurance and CAR um, developed and the price is about $140. So it is um, more expensive than the NHD report. But again, this is one of those things that as you, as a, as a, as an agent, having this as a tool in your, your tool belt is just another one of those things that you can come to your client and say, Hey, we have this as an option. We can do it or we don't have to, but it gives you leverage and it gives you the ability to have something else to provide your clients that, if they are someone who really wants to have more of that information and want to know more about their fire risk, this is a great option for you to, to offer them. And then another thing too, when it comes to listings, this is something that I talk about every time that I talk to agents and really anytime that I talk um, about the NHD report is there are so many ways for you to take that NHD report and to use it for your marketing. Or if you just get a listing and you find out, hey, this home was in a fire zone, what you could do, and this is something I, I suggest to, to agents, is that you can take those checklists that I've shown before and go and door knock the neighborhood, right? That sphere around that home that just got listed there's a lot of homeowners that want that information or want to know about that information. And if you're the one giving it, you're the local area expert and you're the person who's looking out for the entire community. And when it comes to, I know, selling homes for you guys, a lot of it is how do they choose you as the agent over someone else? And in a lot of ways, it comes down to your consistency and it comes down to what you're providing them, right? Are you providing them something of value that not only is going to give them um, a top of mind awareness that you're around, you're aware of, you know, these are different things that are going on in the community. Here's information. And you're doing that on a consistent basis. That's when they end up using you when they decide to sell. And then also what information you're providing them to show them that, you know, a lot of people are, have concerns about selling now because of interest rates or because um, they don't know where um, they're going to move to. And that's where you come in and you can provide that information to them, right? And you're the one who's going to be able to give them the information where they can make that decision better. And so anything that I can provide, so if that's um, our tax estimator, right, that's a great way for you to show your clients. You can pull it up on your phone go through, look at it and say, here is the potential cost on the, the taxes. 
And then you can also talk to them about like Prop 19. And that's where they can take their tax base and move right with that tax base. So if someone was on the fence about moving by you providing that information, that's going to help you to one, solidify your relationship with them. And also you're providing them with something of value that they're going to then look back when they decide to sell. And they're going to say, that's my, that's my realtor. That's the person that was there for me and gave me information to, for me to make a better decision on that. Right. And so at the end of the day, when it comes to the NHD, a lot of the information within it, especially the taxes like Malarus taxes, pace liens, or um, the different 1915 bonds, anything like that, or supplemental taxes. That's just another piece of information that you can come to potential clients or your past clients and use that information to then either get them to buy or sell a new property or sell a, 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 a current property. And as we know, when it comes to the demographic of who owns homes, that's another thing that I, I try to tell agents that think about who really owns homes, what age group of people owns homes and what value do they see, right? What is the, what is it that they see that could get them to potentially move? If it's that they have a two story home, right? They really want a one story home because they know they're in their sixties or seventies or getting older. They need to start thinking about if they have to do stairs all the time, they really want to move into that single family. So you find those pain points for your clients and what you're able to do then is to take them from that two story and the potential, you know, risks of being in that if they're up into their, you know, 80s and then finding where those pain points are. If it's that they're close to a fire zone, right? And there is no fire insurance, finding them somewhere that's a little closer, that's not in those zones is another way for you to kind of look at what are the things that those clients are really worried about or what what is something that you could get them to make that move, right? To make that potential change in their life. And the, the talk about the interest rates and things like that are definitely a valid concern. But as they say, right, all the lenders always say, date the rate, but you're buying the home, right? And at the end of the day, People will move if you give them enough information that's going to help them to make that decision better. And when it comes to other information within the NHD report that is helpful for you when you're prospecting, a lot of the information around certain areas when it comes to like the environmental information, I always suggest using those EQ books. And I've talked about this in presentations before, take that information within that EQ book and whether you want the PDF version or I can give you a physical copy and take that information and provide that every single week, every single month, you know, however often you want to do it. And the more consistent you are, as they say, in all business, all sales, the more consistent you are, the more top of mind you are, you're going to be the easiest person to make that they're going to make that decision to sell. And the, another thing that I've found is when it comes to certain farms, right? When we talk about farming, most agents think that one agent is like a dominant agent in that territory and they can't do it. You know, they can't come in and, and break into that, that certain area because that one agent is selling every home, right? And you see a lot of homes that are selling with those one agent um, with their, you know, sign writer on that on the outside of the house, the sign. But the thing is that when you look at the data and the numbers, and we look at this quite a bit, is that most of the time, agents are only selling one or two homes within an entire city, right? And, and it's just one after the next, where you're seeing that either an agent who does sell a few homes, in a lot of ways, especially now in this market, they're having to go outside of their farm to go and sell homes. And so that's, again, one of those things that looking at the data and information and knowing what's going on, you as, a, as an agent, I guess I would say there's probably in some cities and some farms, you know, you feel like you, you know, don't want to waste the time or go into that area because this one agent or a couple of these agents are really dominating. But what you find is 
that even 11 days after a listing, and this is something that you've probably all experienced, that another agent will list a home on the same exact street. And they'll list it within 11 days or within 15 days of your listing. And doesn't it drive you nuts? And you're like, why did they get the listing, right? I'm the one who's in this area. I'm the one who's helping this one uh, you know, client. Why would they not list with me? And I think a lot of that has to do with are you going, you know, door to door when you get a listing, as soon as you get that listing and giving information out? Or again, there's sometimes where it's a friend's, you know, cousin who's the listing agent who just happened to get it on that street, right? But if you're not being consistent with that, with that area around your listing, you don't know, right? You don't know what the reason was. So I always suggest this is a great opportunity when it comes to the, the information that title's providing, home warranty, NHD, the lenders, all that information. If you put together either like a booklet or a, a flyer or anything that will have a shelf life. So if that is a checklist that I can provide to you and then door hangers from home warranty and then using the information from the title to better, you know, uh, focus in on the farm and focus in on the homes that are more likely to sell. If you do those things, I guarantee you that those people that are on the fence or those people that are thinking about selling, you're going to be one of the top people that they think about because you provided a lot of value and you provided it on a consistent basis. And at the end of the day, you know, when we look at our business and we look at this, really the real estate business in general, most people who are successful when it comes down to it, they're top of mind, they provide consistent information, they provide value, and they are the local area expert, right? They're the person who knows what's going on in town, they know the different restaurants, and they also know what's going on in the market, how many homes are selling. And by providing that information, which a lot of people try to seek out themselves, right? They go to Zillow and they're like, my house is worth, you know, a million dollars and it's only worth 800,000, right? And so if you're providing that information and kind of debunking Zillow or debunking some of the, the information that they're getting on their own, you're going to look even better when it comes to you selling their home because they're not going to be as unrealistic as a lot of people are when they first, you know, list their homes and they're like, I want top dollar. And you know, you know, because you know the market, they're really not going to get a million dollars for the home that they'll probably get, you know, 900,000. And it may be worth 850 or 900. But again, most people are thinking, I got the, the best house on the block. And realistically, you know better that they don't. So at the end of the day, um, I always, you know, just say that if you, if you don't remember anything from what I say, that I'm a resource for you. And when it comes to the specific information within, within the NHD report, I'm always here for, for you to, to talk to your clients too. So, um, I know like a lot of you will, will call Sandy or will call home warranty to talk to the clients, um, about, you know, what different products that they can provide. And I always offer that myself. So if they want to know the specifics, if they want to know what is, you know, this liquefaction zone or what is, you know, affecting my house when it comes to I want to build a pool. Is there going to be something that affects me and I want to build this this new property? Those are all things that I can help um, and talk with your clients. And then another thing that I also offer is to talk with our tax department and our ge geological staff. We're one of the few companies that has uh, a licensed geologist on our staff. And they're constantly, um, they have a great relationship with Cal Fire and a lot of the different entities. So if you have those clients that really want to know specifics or really want to know more information, it's always best for you to offer you know us as a resource. Because I don't know if you guys ever watch those shows where they're always like, I got a guy, I'm going to call the guy, right? And, and they end up, they're the expert, right? And by them, as, as I would offer myself, you know, coming to them as the NHD expert, you're going to look great because you don't have to know everything and you don't know how, have to know the specifics. 
but by having me as that resource, you're going to look like a rock star. And that's what we, we want for you because at the end of the day, we don't do business unless you do business. So anything I can do to help you as an agent to get more business, that's why I'm here. And when it comes to the information within the NHD report, there's a lot of content that you can send out. And the thing about when it comes to natural hazards, right, there, there's some shock value to the information that we're providing. And you can kind of use that to your advantage, right? That you provide that information, it may get someone's attention, right? You're talking about fires, you're talking about an earthquake. We just had a little bit of flooding. We just had an earthquake, right? And then, um, you know, we've always, we always know that it's fire season um, in Southern California. So if any of that stuff happens in the news, that's when I suggest you talk about it, right? Because it's relevant. If you are posting things on social media, maybe do a little blurb about it and then put information from the NHD within it. And that's, again, just top of mind, you're putting your information out there and information that has value. And then you're going to be looked at when it comes to selling homes and you talk about the market, you talk about selling the home. They're going to be like, oh, yeah, I, I saw that post that you posted about, you know, this checklist of what to do in case of an emergency. And I have that, you know, in my in my uh, backpack ready to go if there's an emergency. And another thing that I always suggest too, that a lot of people don't have when they move into houses is a fire extinguisher. Um, that's something that you could literally take a, a label, put a label on it with your information and that's a write off for your marketing. And it's something that again is gonna sit there and it's probably going to sit in the kitchen and every single time they go and they see that fire extinguisher, they're going to think of you. And it's something that is so small and in some ways a little silly, but it's, it's again, top of mind, right? It's another way for you to, to be that person that's in front of their face. And that every time they think about that, that fire extinguisher, they're going to think about you and they're going to think about, well, when I end up selling or, you know, anything like that right? Someone's going to end up calling you or again, it's like the referral. So every time they see that fire extinguisher and one of their relatives is telling them that they're going to sell, they're going to say, Hey, call, call this agent. This is the agent that helped me sell my home or help me buy this house. And this is who you should use. Right. And so at the end of the day, that's all the things that, that I think, that you can use within the NHD or information that's similar, right? Fires or anything relevant like that. And, um, you know, I'm, a, I'm again, a resource. Anytime you need any type of content or you have any, you know, requests for ideas of what you could do to kind of set yourself apart, that's why I'm here. I'm here to help you grow your business. Um, and if you guys have any questions, uh, please feel free to, to reach out. Uh, Brandon, I have a question. Yep. Now, yep. of course, there are more information uh, for uh, uh, under your 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 belt is the is better. But sometimes the overabundance of information can be overwhelming for the you know for your clients. So, for how sure. to engage that? Uh, you know, where to talk or what to disclose and and what to ask for. You know, what is your, your uh, words of wisdom? Yeah, so I, I totally agree with that. And and uh, in a lot of ways, this new product, product uh, Fortress Fire, you got to be careful on if you provide that to a client who yeah. then is like, whoa, this is <laughs> you know, scary. You know, this is a fire, you know, fire information. And I don't want to know that my risk score is this high. So this, again, is one of those where if they're asking about that type of information, that's where you kind of offer it but I wouldn't go offering it as upfront, right? And the okay. NHD is just required. And so when it comes to, you know, overwhelming with, with them with too much information, it's more of the clients who want and are seeking out more of the information. I would say a good indicator is the person who's reading every single line of the RPA, of the, t you know, everything. If they're going through every specific thing, that's someone that you may want to provide that. But again, like Peter said, you got to gauge whether or not you want to give them more information because that can, again, cause them to, 
you know, question, you know, the, the home and is it, is it really safe? Right. And at the end of the day, I always say when it comes to the information within the NHC report, there's a lot of information when it comes to like, you know, a fire, that's where you tell people, look, you live in California, here's all the risks and all the things that we deal with, right? Earthquakes we deal with on a yearly basis, but does it really affect every property? No. Fires, it affects us, especially the smoke and all that, but does it burn down every home every year? No. And then, you know, the floods and things like that, this again is is a great way for you to just tell people, you know, I know that you live in California, but did you know <laughs> we have, you know, fires and floods and earthquakes and here's just information, like I said, those checklists and things like that, where it has a shelf life, that's where it's going to be more helpful than scaring someone off. So the line I always use is, and this is, you can totally steal this, um, be prepared, not scared. Right. And so by giving information that's more of like the checklists or different information, like the fire extinguisher, that type of stuff, I don't think is going to affect people. But when it comes to that fortress fire, that is a big concern that we have um, expressed to CAR is, is this information and this additional information going to scare people away from buying properties? And that's why it's more on the buyer side that the buyer would want to know this information versus the seller providing that as as a piece of information right the seller is way less likely to want to provide more information on the fires and mm -hmm. the fire um, effects of the property but the buyer wants to know more or they should want to know more of what they could do to mitigate it once they move in so yeah, another concern too uh brendan is that a lot of agents expect you uh, to do the research or uh, get the information for free for them you know and when you ask ask them to pay for something they may they may think that hey you know why should i pay for something that uh, that is you know free all the time and then i can get it uh, free uh, from that for for example title insurance company or other other area why should i go to a uh, brandon and then she charged me 149 dollars for a report that i you know I think right, <laughs> right, totally, and <laughs> and that's where using all the other information that we provide, like where I can look up if it's in a fire zone and or flood zone or any of that information, that's really the I would say the front end, the thing that you really want to focus more on um, when you're providing that information. But the hundred and forty dollar report again, fortress fire that they're providing, um, this is just again, one of those things that's additional. And if you don't want to pay for it and you don't want that additional information, there's no harm, no foul, right? You don't have to do it. And so that's something that we've talked with them is I know a lot of agents would probably that you guys were would be less likely or less inclined to want to buy this information to find out this information. But if you're offering it to your clients and your client wants to pay for it to get that information, I think that's a better way to offer it is to say, if you'd like this, you know, this is an additional, a lot of information. It's a thick report. There's a lot of information within it. You know, if you would like to know more and what you could do to mitigate your risk, or if again, it's $140 and if they can't get the insurance, but this helps them to get insurance, this could be a, a great tool to, to help with that. And this is again, where you have to go and talk with the, the different, insurance brokers because i know they also do things differently and how they provide the insurance and how they offer the insurance so i don't i don't necessarily know i know what we've been told by the department of insurance is that those brokers are the ones who are going to be able to provide that not the state farms not the companies that were doing it and i have heard recently within the last week it looks like some of those insurance companies are coming back i don't know if you guys heard that but it looks like they're working with the Department of Insurance to, to figure sure. out how to provide um, insurance again. So again, this is just one of those things that if you want, if you want to provide it or you want to offer it, um, call me and we can look through um, how it can help you. Because again, like Peter said, there are definitely ways where it can harm you versus helping you. We'd never want that to happen. So 
when it comes to this product, Fortress Fire, it's another piece of information that if your client is seeking it, that's where I would offer it. But if you're if they're not seeking that information and you don't want it to harm your your potentially harm your transaction, I wouldn't offer it at all. Okay, very good. Thank you. Yep. Brandon. Thank you, Brandon. A lot of good information. If yep. you want to, uh, if you want to ask him any more information, uh, any more questions, just feel free to reach out to Brandon. Brandon, I had a, a couple of uh, key points that I want to reiterate to our agents that you brought up. Um, right now, during the you know the tough time in our industry, right now, um, you mentioned uh, comfort zone. You do you feel that a lot of agents, because you work outside of our brokerage as well, so you're seeing what agents from various brokerages are doing. So do you feel that right now agents are going the extra mile, getting out of their comfort zone that they're usually you know stay they usually stay around and and to get more business to increase business to stay afloat. Is that what you're seeing out there? Yeah. And I see that there's agents. I mean, I, I know a couple agents in this area that are, they're going out to the high desert. They're going to Marietta. They're going to those areas outside one affordability, but two, it's more of the inventory. And I know that that's sometimes um, that agents that as you, as agents, you know, you kind of got, got to go where the business is in some ways. Um, but this is also the time to really keep keep working on your farm because um, some of the the offices that that um, I go to um, they've been talking about you know at the end of the day the markets are the markets and they change right and when that change happens is usually when agents get more of the business because they have been doing the work in that farm on at that time. And I know we did a presentation with Angie um, and that new product that First American has, Ignite RE. That's such a great product and a tool for you to find specific properties, right? Doing that specific right. farming is going to get you way more bang for your buck versus just going out there and trying to do an entire, you know, EDDM route. Your money is yeah. going to be better spent yeah. specifically marketing. I, I agree. All right. A couple other takeaways were top of mind. Uh, you got to stay in front of your clients, your uh, sphere of influence. I can't reiterate that. You know, they're going to go with someone else if someone else is on their mind. So you have to constantly reach out to them via text, phone call, email, uh, social media. But that is probably the reason why they choose other agents is because someone else is reaching out to them on a regular basis. So that brings me to the following point that Brandon brought up, which is consistency. You got to stay consistent. You got to do the work. You know, um, it's not like pre pandemic or during the pandemic where the work came to you. It's a whole different animal now. So uh, Brandon, appreciate it. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, very good information. Thanks Ruben. Thanks Peter. And Thank you. You guys know I'm always here for you. Call me. Right, right, right. Good seeing you. Thank you. Great. Thanks. All right, guys. Uh, moving on. Uh, we're running out of a little bit of time. A um, couple of uh, birthday shout outs for this week. Uh, D Chow and Cody Wu. Happy birthday to you guys. Okay. I hope you guys enjoy your birthday week. Um, some reminders for the week as far as uh, classes and meetings. Uh, this Wednesday at 10 a.m., we will be having our fourth, Peter, I think. Yes. 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 Fourth CRE WIN class. That's the commercial class that's hosted by uh, Josh Best. Uh, also, that same day at 1 p.m., we'll be having a lunch and learn with Nicole with Fidelity Title, and she'll be going over her Agent One um, app that I believe that Tom Ferry is um, uh, uh, actually, uh, um, what is he doing? I think he is doing a class on, on Agent One as well, or he's like the, the uh, person behind Agent One. So anyhow, that's Wednesday at 1 p.m. in person and also virtual, okay? All, and then on Friday, we're gonna be at Friday's training at 10 a.m. We're going to be going over 1031 exchange with Antoine. Okay. So if you want to educate yourself on the do's and don'ts and the, the whole aspect of 1031 exchange, 
Uh, that'll be on Friday at 10 a.m. Um, with that, I just want to rem also remind agents that the caravans are out and uh, they are, you know, in full full swing. So if you have the time on Wednesdays and Thursdays, I urge you to go check out the inventory, mingle with the other agents, uh, probably clients as well, buyers, see what they're doing. But um, if you have the time, go check out one or two houses at least, okay? With that, I'm going to hand it over to Doug so he can go over the um, uh, new business for Arcadia. Doug, good morning. Great. Thank, thank you very much. And welcome back, Ruben. Thank you. You look, you look nice and rested. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to come back. But... I, I, I'd love to hear about your, your trip later. All right. Sounds good. So, you know, you mentioned Friday's class with Phil Latuan. I've known Phil for way over 30 years. This guy is a, is a really, really smart on 1031s. I had um, I had an agent come to me about a week ago and say, you know, my client wants to, uh, the, the property they sold and closed escrow on last month, they want to do uh, a 1031. I go, it's a little bit late for that, you know? So, yeah. uh, I, I mean, so, I mean, I says, you know, they, you already collected the money, right? Yeah, well, you're going to pay the taxes, just go buy something else. But 1031s, guys, is really, really important because it will save your client a ton of money and get you some sales, too. So, uh, well, I've got three listings and six sales I want to talk about today. Uh, my first listing is on Leroy and San Gabriel. It's a residential lease, three bedroom, two bath, 3700 a month. Gary Lee is a listing agent. Amy Wang uh, listed six units in Los Angeles for $1,450,000. And I listed a property in Almani, three bedroom, two bath, for six forty-five. dollars Went on the market late Friday. I've got three offers on it this morning already. Good. So uh, if, if you've got a buyer in Almonte, uh, it's on Nismith Street on Lambert. Uh, you may want to move quick. Let me know. Uh, on some of the sales we've had, uh, we had some good ones here. Young Chin sold something in your neck of the woods, Ruben, in Alhambra on Valley Boulevard, a commercial shopping center, five million nine seventy-five. Wow. Uh, Alma Ooh. Aguilar had a buyer in West Covina for seven ninety-two. Alma also had a listing sale in Fontana. Talk about going out far. I mean, the business is where it is, right? Uh, Six hundred twenty thousand dollars. Her listing. Amy Wang had a listing on Meeker in El Monte. I believe was units sold for a million dollars even. And Claire Chin had a buyer in Duarte for 941. And the last one is Lung Chin had a buyer in Monrovia for 975. So things are uh, moving pretty good, hopefully, here. <laughs> hopefully we can finish out the year with a bang. Mm -hmm. You guys, I want to tell you something. The end of the year is when other agents stop working. But buyers and sellers are still out there. If you want to make money, do keep working. Let the agents take their break. You guys keep working because there is business out there and you have very little competition when you get into November, December. Trust me, I've been through this a lot of times. So anyway, good luck to everybody and have, have a great week. And I'll see you Arcadia agents on Thursday. All right, Doug. Doug, Doug send me that, that invite this week. I'll, I'll make it for sure this week on Thursday. Yeah, well, well you couldn't make it the last two weeks, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, all right. But that's good information. I just want to reiterate that, you know, business is still there. You know, it's it, who's going to get that business is is the name of the game. Uh, you know, sellers, they have their own reasons and motivations to sell. You know, we don't know that. So you just have to be in front of the business when it when it surfaces. You know, a seller could be moving out of California. They could have uh, gotten a new job um you know or a divorce you know there's various reasons why someone would have to sell regardless of the high interest rates right now so but you have to be out there you have to be consistent you have to stay be in front of the business stay top of mind um so as far as alhambra we have um two new sales and a listing i'll do the listing first hugo chan He's a fairly new uh, uh, agent with us. Congratulations, Hugo. Hugo. Uh, he has a commercial listing on Peck Road in Almani. Uh, I don't know if he's here with us today. I want to see if he wanted to pitch it. I uh, don't believe so. So it's um, commercial 
uh, property in Almani, it's going for $3 million, uh, 3036. So I'll probably have him send out a flyer, send it out to uh, all our agents. And if you have anybody interested, we'd love, love to keep it in-house and stuff. Uh, sales, Richard Wang has a commercial sale in Rialto for 4.129. Congratulations to you, Richard. And uh, Shumei has a residential uh, sale in Rosemead at 855,000. So congratulations to you, Shumei, as well. Um, that's all we have for this week. I'm gonna hand it over to Peter so he can give his weekly update. Peter, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Ruben. Uh, welcome back after two weeks. Uh, you seem to be rejuvenated and very uh, robust. So uh, we we miss you for the last two weeks. Believe me. Ah, come on. At you least better, I do. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you, though, Peter. Appreciate uh, it. All right. But anyway, good morning, everybody. It's Kovanka George, and I hope you had a nice weekend. Um, last week we have some good news from the Fed. Uh, they, uh, they they decided to get a pause on the interest rate, so they are not going to raise the interest rate, uh, rate uh, uh, anymore, at least for the time being. But they're hinting that they um, in, in November or so, uh, they might uh, have to uh, uh, adjust a little bit because the inflation rate is still not uh, to the point that they wanted. So, but uh, meanwhile, you know, the, we have a break in the interest rate raise. And so, uh, you know, tell your client and, and this is the time to, uh, a good time to buy. And uh, drum up so for some business before the end of the eight, the, the year is over. All right, uh, what I'm going to share with you today is something I hope would be interesting to you is uh, is the probate sales and, and real estate. And uh, a lot of people um, uh, are kind of afraid of uh, probate uh, sales and real estate. I don't know why. Uh, it it is not that complicated, and and uh, I think it's just the fear of the word probate itself that uh, kind of uh, give you an uneasy feeling. But uh, once you know about the in and outs of the, the probate uh, proceeding, uh, you'll feel more comfortable uh, with it. And uh, hopefully you can get some uh, probate sales in, 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 uh, in your business. Okay, so uh, let's, um, let's uh, try to understand what probate proceeding in general uh, is like. Um, well, probate um, is actually uh, estate administration uh, that provides the order, orderly uh, distribution of real estate and personal property uh, owned by the decedent. Now, you know, when, when, you, when somebody dies and doesn't have a will, uh, or even if they have a will and they, they, if they don't have a, a living trust, then uh, the, all the property or uh, personal or, or real estate has to go through uh, what we call the probate proceeding. It's a court monitored uh, uh, proceeding that, uh, that will uh, uh, um, ensure the orderly distribution of, uh, of properties uh, uh, owned by the decedent. So uh, once, <clears throat> once that happens, a personal representative will be appointed now, if it is uh, uh, stipulated in the will, then the personal representative will be what is called uh, executor or executrix uh, uh, in, in that will. Now, if there's a no will uh, and uh, the court has to uh, to uh, to appoint it, then uh, that person will be become the uh, the, uh, the court will appoint that person as the personal representative of the estate. Uh, so uh, the personal representative is charged with the fiduciary responsibility of gathering all the assets and paying for the debts of the decedent and in such a way that the beneficiaries or heir of the decedent will receive the maximum inheritance. So their financial, but their fiduciary duty is to the beneficiary uh, uh, of, the, of the will or the, the, uh, of, the, uh, of the trust or, or the you know, whoever uh, uh, appointed him, uh, namely uh, sometimes uh, the court uh, uh, is in charge of uh, appointing the personal representative. Now, uh, when may the personal representative sell their real estate property? Well, with, when the situation happens that when the sale of the property is necessary to pay all the debts, but because when 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 somebody dies, they may they might have a lot of debts to pay, 
and uh, and uh, you know there's not enough cash to to do that, so they have to uh, to to sell the uh, the the real estate or, or to to uh, to pay off uh, some of the uh, uh, promissory notes or taxes. Okay, and uh, also the, this it, uh, it, when the sale is to the advantage of the estate and in the best interest of the interested uh, persons, or if the, the property must be sold according to the terms of the will, so, because sometimes uh, in the will they said that well, uh, you know, upon my death, I uh, we have to sell that property right away so that we can distribute the the, the proceeds to somebody, you know, so. So at that point, the the, the uh, personal representative has to uh, sell the property in order to satisfy the um, the, the the will uh, of the decedent, and uh, <clears throat> uh, and also the uh, um, the decedent will have to designate the can also designate the manner in which the real estate is to be sold. Now, if there is not such an instruction. That the court will will kind of uh, uh, tell you uh, tell the person representative of how they uh, want the property to be sold. Uh, most of the time, in order to maximize the uh, the proceed of the sale from the real estate, uh, they usually go through the, uh, the 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 private sale uh, of the real estate. But of course, uh, it can go through a public auction. You know. <clears throat> if there's no such a demand in the in the in the market, or a different method specified in the will of the uh, decedent, uh, so it, it all depends. Uh, you have we have to look at the will, or if there is no uh, such a uh, um, uh, provision in the will, in the will, then the uh, we look to the court to uh, to uh, find out what's the best way to sell the property. Uh, now, uh, if uh, if the personal uh, representative is in charge of selling the real estate, there are some rules that apply to the sale. Okay, first of all, the sale price must be ninety percent of the appraised value uh, that was uh, appraised within a one year prior to the sale of the property. In other words, if uh, if the the, the the appraisal value is a one million dollar, so the price, the sale price, must be at least nine nine hundred thousand. So uh, if they if there's an offer of eight hundred ninety thousand, uh, it's not going to jive. You know the court is not going to to approve that. So that has to be at least ninety percent of the price value. Another and also you need to uh, to put a deposit of ten percent of the the purchase price when you are submitting an offer. Now uh, usually in the normal uh, transaction, you only you only put three percent of the purchase price as the earnest uh, money deposit, right? But in in pre appropriate sale, you have to pay, put down at least a ten percent of the purchase price, and also you have to put a notice in the in the local Your newspaper saying that. to an automated voice right. messaging system. Nine five one eight. Uh, David, three, David, three, can you, David, can you? Okay, thank you. And okay. and uh, another okay. another requirement is that um, uh, you have to give a notice to. About the, the the appropriate sale, uh, unless uh, you, you in, unless the personal representative has the full power or authority under the Independent Administration of Estate Act, which is called IAEA. So <clears throat> you know if, if there's not such a, a, a an arrangement, then you have to give a notice to the, the uh, prior to the sale of the property. You have to give a, a notice of sale uh, in the local newspaper and advertise it. Uh, and then after the 30 days after uh, you accept the offer, you have to report it to the to the court uh, to petition uh, the court for confirmation. Okay, now so the first thing in the property sale, that's of course you have you have to do a, a, a listing agreement, right? The listing contract is very similar, very uh, uh, it's the same as the uh, that uh, when you do the regular. The, um, uh, sales of the property, um, but the only thing that, that that you have to do is that you have to attach uh, the probate listing addendum to the uh, to the uh, listing uh, listing of the of the uh, property. Uh, you know you have to at attach it to the residential listing agreement, and uh, there are forms available that uh, you can also use. 
the, uh, the ones such, such as the residential listing agreement, the probate listing addendum, the probate addendum, or the disclosure re requiring uh, regarding the real estate agency relationship and also the seller uh, advisory. Those uh, forms are uh, uh, in the in in the car forms or zip forms. Uh, you can uh, uh, readily get um, um, get to them. So uh, when you have any uh, a question regarding that, uh, you can call the uh, Ruben and, and me, and we can point you into the right direction. But you don't have to 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 use all of the forms that are listed here, but only when it's uh, appropriately and in different situations. Okay. Uh, as far as the agency requirement and the TDS and other disclosure uh, requirements, uh, well, the, the the compliance with the agency disclosure laws is just uh, required just like any other uh, real estate transaction. Uh, but in this case, the TDS is not required. Um, uh, however, you must disclose the material facts about the, the property. Uh, you know, you don't have a have to have a formal TDS uh, disclosure, but uh, if you know of any material facts, such as uh, somebody died in the um, in the uh, property within uh, you no know, uh, five years, or uh, and uh, you have to disclose that, um, and also uh, you know if you have a foundation problem or material facts affect the property, you have to disclose it as well. And uh, and um, the property sale also must uh, comply with all the other disclosure laws. Uh, if you want to uh, check it out, and you should go to the uh, sale disclosure uh, charts uh, in the in the car car forms, uh, they will tell you exactly uh, what kind of other disclosure that you have to give. Um, and for the for, for the agents get involved with the selling of the residential units, one of four units of uh, real estate, uh, then you have to, uh, to, to uh, conduct a reasonable, competent, and diligent visual inspection and give the uh, AVID report uh, to, uh, to, you know, to, to disclose all the, the findings of the, um, uh, about the property that, that you have inspected. Uh, so that is uh, a requirement. As far as, as, far as real estate uh, commission uh, and probate sale is concerned, it's, it's no different than in regular uh, regular uh, sales. Um, you, you know, usually, you know, you you can you, the the personal representative will set set uh, what kind of um, permissions that the listing agents uh, get and what the listing agents can share with the, the selling agent. Usually, uh, if, if it's not uh, too unreasonable, uh, the court will not uh, uh, disallow it. So in other words, uh, you know, if, if it's reasonable, the court will probably allow it. But the maximum usually cannot exceed uh, the, the amounts that is uh, stipulated in the, in the uh, appropriate court in the local uh, rules of the appropriate court in the in a certain county. So if you really want to know uh, what's the maximum commission that you can charge, then you should call the uh, the local um, county and find out what the local rules are and what the maximum uh, commission is allowed in that uh, jurisdiction. Um, now, uh, if if uh, if if that is no problem, if the if if the uh, the um, the commission is reasonable, then uh, then it, it will be just like the, uh, the the regular transaction. After the consummation of deal, uh, then the listing agent and the selling agent will be entitled to the commissions that is stipulated in that uh, in the our, our, our PA. Uh, so um, now, uh, so if what what if they they don't, you know. Uh, when is that? What is time that when the uh, 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 agents will entitled to the commission? You have to satisfy three uh, three uh, conditions. The first one is that you must have an actual uh, sale that uh, that that is made, and also uh, the sale has to be confirmed by the court unless the sale is conducted under the IA, IEA 
or and the third requirement is the sale has to be consummated. That means that the sale is completely done and everybody signs and uh, you know and it's ready to close escrow. Uh, then they are uh, then the agents will be entitled to the commission. Now, uh, uh, different different uh, brokers involved in the sales are as they uh, probably can determine how the uh, how the uh, the commissions will be divided between them, and it doesn't have to be in writing. Okay, uh, I know that uh, real estate is always in the statute of fraud, but in case there's a uh, uh, there's a agreement between uh, the uh, listing broker and the selling broker, the split of the commission does not has to be uh, uh, in writing. Um, and 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 um, and in any any advertisement in the MLS saying how you split the the um, the commission will constitute uh, agreement to split the the commission. So that is uh, that that is just you know regular uh, practice. Now. Um, usually, the court will not um, you know change the commission that's agreed by brokers. Unless the amounts uh, exceed the local court rules, uh, so 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 you don't have to worry about. It. Usually, the, the commission is between five to six percent, which is pretty normal nowadays. Um, and, um, and and but but we have to we have to remember that any time that the uh, buyer uh, who's um, uh, related to the uh, the, the listing uh, uh, broker. Um, uh, you know, it's it's the the court the, the appropriate court specifically uh, prohibit the, the the commission pay to the uh, the agent who's directly or indirectly uh, involved the purchaser of the real estate uh, of the real estate. So in other words, if you are related uh, to the um, uh, to the uh, listing broker. You know, uh, if the buyer is related to the listing broker, the listing broker will not get the uh, yeah, get the commission. Okay, um, and uh, if uh, if if the broker's commission is not uh, order on the court record at the confirmation hearing, the broker can request in writing, and 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 the court may uh, modify the order to uh, award the uh, commission. And uh, if uh, however, if the commission still uh, uh, unpaid, uh, then it's up to the, the broker uh, whether they want to sue their estate or not. But, but usually, it doesn't doesn't happen, you know. And then when when there's a court order that they, they pay the commission, usually the estate must pay the uh, the commission. That there's very very little chance that they that the estate uh, would deny it. And and if if there's a dispute anytime if, if there's a dispute between the broker and the commissions, uh, uh they can always go to their local uh, board and and then and, 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 and we request request for mediation or arbitration at the local board. But as I said, it seldom happens. So you know most of the time, then the the probate sale is pretty clean because you usually have the assistance of a, a probate lawyer and also the court. Uh, you know is usually pretty fair. Okay. Now, so uh, when you when you try to submit uh, an offer in the appropriate uh, sales, so first of, of course you have to submit the offer in writing, right? Uh, this uh, says the statute of fraud, and any uh, any kind of offer has to be in writing, and the title to be conveyed with whatever the the, the estate holds, you know, whatever they, um, uh, you know, whether it's uh, fee simple or or. Um, you know, uh, lifetime, life estate or whatever. But anyway, uh, you know, that you cannot change. Um, and um, the, the sale, of course, is subject to the, the court, uh, confirmation. And most of the time, the, the property is sold as is. So you have to do uh, the, your homework and, and find out a lot, uh, the, a pro the property itself. A lot of times that, um, you know, they, they they will not do uh, much uh, repairs uh, other than the simple ones and um, so the uh, also the total commission uh, will be will be set by court and allowed by court uh, usually it can be uh, set by the uh, by listing broker but again it has to be have a confirmation by the court um, and the offer should be uh, submitted to the personal representative who would be like the owner of the property and who has uh, the power to accept the offer. 
Uh, um, they all and and also the offer can be submitted anytime. And usually the the, um, the offer is it's not a contingent. It's not a contingent on anything. You know, not contingent on the long the uh, on the long approval or contingent uh, on, on other things. Um, so because the the court wants to have a clean clean offer, they don't want to to have any if a person or any question questionable things that they drag on with the the probate. They want to get the probate done to, uh, as quickly as possible. And the minimum price, as I said, it has to be ninety percent of the appraised value within a year prior to the date of confirmation hearing. And then you have to put ten percent of the uh, of the purchase uh, price to instead of the three usually three percent. Um, and then the, the personal representative is required to file a report of the sale after thirty days, you know, uh, within thirty days of acceptance of the offer. Um, and another uh, interesting off uh, feature of the appropriate sale is that hey, even though the original bid is accepted, it's not the final final offer. Okay, you can still bid the, the uh, I mean counter the the original bid uh, if you offer uh, more ten percent more. In other words, if the if they if they accept the nine hundred thousand offer. Um, and uh, if you uh, uh, then then you say oh well it's the, I, I I think I can uh, give a better bet offer I I can so I can submit the one million dollar offer to court and the court will entertain your your offer and probably will accept your offer because you offer more than ten percent of what the final bid is so uh, well you know the whole whole thing is it's pretty simple and and it it it, it can be done without much stress. Uh, if you know the uh, how to comply with the requirements, and also a lot of time you will have the assistance of a, a attorney, and you have the supervision of a court. So, so it's it's uh, it's not a bad thing to to do. And um, and uh, you know if you have some friends who are uh, uh, a state lawyer or a probate lawyer, get acquainted with them, and then you know they will help, uh, need your help in selling. Uh, the real estate in a, in a private uh, setting. So, so uh, do that, then I, I think it's a, a good niche too that you if you can uh, find more about it. Okay, all right, that's it. Um, that's that's what I have to share today. Uh, is, is there any question? Any more questions? Peter, you're going to be sending that out to. Uh, you're going to email that out to everybody. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I always, I always do that. Okay, and I just checked the chat. There's no questions there. So, any questions for Peter? No. All right. Well, All that right. that concludes our meeting for this week. Uh, I, I wish you guys well this uh, coming week. It, like I said, it's fall. It's a change in uh, um, weather and season. But keep keep grinding it out, you know. The business is out there. You just got to be top of mind. And we will see you next Monday. All right? Right. All right. Have a nice Bye -bye. week, guys. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.